Good evening to one and all present here. We welcome you all at Easy Schooling. Easy Schooling is a community of 650 plus schools with 75,000 plus parents in which we are working with the schools to transform their admission process smartly through artificial intelligence and technology. We aim at all parenting related issues like school admission psychology. Till now, we have organized 80 plus panel sessions with over 200 plus school leaders on board with us. And it is our pleasure to have all of you here with us. And the topic for today's session is interactive learning as a creative tool of education, benefits and incorporation. But before head starting with the panel discussion, I would love to introduce all the panelists who we have here with us. First of all, we have Mrs. Jyoti Sharma, the principal of Greenwood Public School. She's a deeply committed educator with over 24 years of proven ability to adopt new and innovative methods to make learning enjoyable and meaningful. An articulate communicator able to effectively connect with students at a variety of academic levels. Consistently maintained excellent relations with students parents, staff members, and management. Self-motivated and resourceful with resilient planning, organizational and leadership skills. Core skills include child-centered instruction, curriculum development, and implementation, attendance and grade reports too. Training, development, and mentoring and counseling. So uh, she is all in one basically. <laughs> Thank you so much for being a part of this panel discussion. And yes, I am honored to have you here. Thank you so much. It is a privilege to be one amongst the others. And today we are not here to talk about something or to explain. We, it's, it's like it's a collaborative learning and a collective learning, which I believe in. And I'm sure it's definitely going to be a very, very good learning experience for all of us. All the best to everyone and a very good evening to everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Next up again, we have Jyoti Ma'am, uh, Jyoti Palla, who is the founding principal of Manaskriti School. She's deeply entrenched into nature and her teaching pedagogy encapsulates nature as the primal methodology to foster learning amongst young minds. Cultivating a learning experience through her hands-on methodology embedded in nature along with our cultural ethics lies at the heart of her academic vision. As Tagore had rightly said, the highest education is that what does not merely gives us information but makes our life in harmony with all existence. Ms. Bhalla has optimistically modeled her design to lead in this ideology. As the principal, Ms. Bhalla is leading as a facilitator of education and deeply believes in the expansion and development of a child's mind and its neonatal state. She adores the idea of playfulness and natural fluidity tapped inherently in the children and firmly believes in exploring and augmenting them for the world to have its future leaders. Thank you so much, Ms. Bhalla, Jyoti Ma'am, for being here and again, enlightening the event with your presence. I'm feeling very humbled and honored to be part of this uh, team and let us learn together and experience from each other's rich experience. I'm sure all of us are going to carry forward for, with each other. Thank you for calling me. Next up, we have Rupal Nehra. She is the principal of JVS Memorial Public School and she is serving the school since 2016 as a principal only and she also belongs to one of the villages in Meerut. And the school that she is running is awesome and she is doing a wonderful job. Thank you so much Rupal ma'am for, you know, for your presence even after so much that must have happened in the school because I remember my teachers and the principal used to be like us. 
<laughs> that's it thanks a lot thank you so much next up uh, we have nandita ma'am from gbn senior secondary school she is a post graduate in mathematics from st stephen's college delhi university she began her career as a research associate with h r good earth limited but was very soon drawn to the education field she has spent much of her 22 years of her professional career with students as a school educator she began her journey as a classroom teacher of mathematics with the heritage school uh, before she moved to shriram schools in gurgaon only she motivated all of her because of all her experiences in the school and then she went to uh, complete her bachelor's degree in education she began her school like leadership experience as the founder principal of the shriram universal school at rota uh, to be a teacher is to be a learner first this is what she believes in and currently she is working on a phd thesis on educational leadership her decision uh, to become an administrator from a teacher uh she basically had a strong impact she wanted to you know keep a strong impact on the school community and that is why she is here with us as the principal of gbn senior secondary school thank you so much and it is so wonderful to see how each one of us through different journeys are here today and i really really hope that we learn and hear all the different opinions and take forward our journeys learning from each other thank you so much thanks a lot next up we have mr paras arora he is the co-founder of codex codex education and also a graduate from university of british columbia thank you so much mr paras for being here and enlightening the event again thank you thank you for uh, you know getting everyone here you know it's it's always good to you know meet people that are making such an impact in education and especially with the all the teachers and principals here who better you know even uh, we remember even especially around this time of the year it's a festive season and i'm sure all of you have had a very long day already christmas carnivals sport meet and all of these functions and and i'm really looking forward to interacting with everyone here thank you thanks a lot so let's begin with the session i would like to ask the first question goes to choti ma'am from greenwood public school and the question is uh, we have encountered several innovations in the educational sphere uh, when it comes to lifting the spirits of students to make them feel inclined towards learning interactive learning is one approach that sure seems to be working well for the students uh, would you please elaborate on what it is about interactive learning that capture the attention of the students uh, thank you i'll uh, uh, give this uh, i'll be delighted to give this answer uh today's world is increasingly globalized we all know that so it is very important to make the learning and education and holistic experience for all the students it should go beyond the classroom academics and keeping this in mind the schools are bringing forward various much required innovations in the classroom this is all to give the students an all round development and uh, ensure a proper growth progress of the children to boost the children uh, learning and understanding the teachers are using various innovative techniques that can make the learning effective engaging and fun filled uh, if you ask me to name a few of the innovative techniques uh there are plenty but uh let me just uh, bring forward a few of them like the audio visual equipments which nowadays are a part and parcel of every school you know smart boards are there in every almost every school has smart board facility even in the government schools government organizations so are the flip classrooms that has uh, that is a new thing new teaching technique which has been used in the schools and it is it is really creating wonders in the learning process of the children role play had always been a part of the teaching process and it is very effectively working in today's scenario as well uh, 
peer to peer teaching it used to be earlier also and now also but it really has a lot of innovative uh, ness in the teaching process where the learners get ample opportunity to to role play as a teacher and teach each other so you know with students there is a, a little hitch which always sustains by us i mean when it comes to asking questions in the class so uh, this peer to peer teaching works wonders you know when uh, the teacher has already explained the concept the children can be given certain uh, topics which can be divided role number wise as per the teacher's uh, discretion and then the children can teach those topics either to introduce or to recapitulate the concept and it works really wonders gamification is another beautiful technique which is nowadays uh, into a uh, lot more practice in classroom scenario and it enhances the uh, the child's learning of concepts in depth understanding of concepts and application becomes much more easier and uh, the best part is that it caters to all variety all levels of the students whether they are uh, uh, struggling in the class to to understand the concept or they are the gifted children who already uh, you know they they come up with the ideas much earlier than what the teacher is wanting to explain so they also uh, you know collaborate in the teaching process and that's the best part of collaborative learning so basically it is an idea of going beyond the classroom scenario and then ensuring a 100% uh, learning objective to be achieved uh, as far as the interactive learning is concerned in simple words if you ask me it is described as a technique that seeks to get the students actively engaged in the learning process and often this is through the use of technology it on incorporates a lot of uh, you know uh, many types of methods which are purposely in purposefully involving the students engaging them with the material aided teaching and learning process to talk about the interactive learning it is it is a hands on a real world process of communicating information in the classroom scenario we know that the passive learning it relied totally on the listening of the teachers lectures or the rote memorization of the information or the figures or the equations or, i mean it we talk about different types of subjects uh, there used to be a lecture way of teaching and a rote memorization with method of uh, learning but when we talk about the interactive learning the students are invited to participate in the conversation and this is much more through the technology if you ask me uh, to give an example like the online <coughs> reading and interactive math programs or through the group exercises uh, the interactive learning can be enhanced or can be taken up we've all heard of the a uh, lot of uh, you know uh, a holistic working with the children and interactive learning technique is the best way how we can Uh, motivate the learners to observe to talk about their observations to talk about their thoughts their feelings uh, through a much better uh, way of expression because they can use the technology also because some all children are not having the same kind of a level of working and their forte is also different some can very they some may be very good orators the others can uh, display through art forms and uh, there would be another set of children who are very good in their uh, uh, technical skills so interactive learning helps and bound binds all these kind kind of you know variety of learners into a string where they they learn from each other in a very very beautiful and interactive manner where the teacher also enjoys her teaching process and the learner suitably uh, enjoys the learning process that's it from my side Thank you so much. Very well said. Because I, being an average student, I could relate with everything that you spoke. <laughs> Thank you so much. Anybody who would like to add anything to Ma'am's point? We're good with it. What Ma'am said, we all agree to it. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs>
wonderfully spoken thank you thanks a lot mm-hmm. uh next up uh, let's go forward with the next question and i would like to go forward with jyoti ma'am uh you need jyoti to specify bala. <laughs> <laughs> jyoti ma'am love from manasri ji uh ma'am we all have heard that there are benefits of interactive learning for students what would you say about the incorporation of interactive learning in students and how beneficial would you say it would be for the school and even the educator to incorporate interactive learning uh definitely you know interactive learning is all about opening out your communication level the two way communication between the teacher and the student no class is said to be a live classroom until unless the child and the teacher the are both of them are able to communicate gone are the days dear when the child is sitting idle and the teacher is only teaching the as ma'am had already jyoti ma'am my previous panelists had already talked about the interactive way of learning with the digital media so that also really prompts you to make the child also speak and the teacher also speak now how the how well this incorporation happens is only when you have a very positive and a happy environment in the classroom where no child is nudged to ask and inquire and discover anything it's very rightly said that once you have told a child to sit and not to ask beyond he will never open up to ask you the question so incorporation always starts with a positive way of teaching in an environment where the children have the free hold of asking and discovering anything we in our school like one of the interactive tools that we all use is champs Champs is a communication and a classroom management tool that we all use which is very very interactive where we set the conversation level the help mode what the child is going to take it up the activity mode that the child is going to take with the teacher that whether they're going to have a group activity or it's individualized activity and what type of a movement the teacher is expecting in groups in singles in individuals in solos and then what how the what after the movement then we also have the uh, success criteria relating to it that how well the teacher has been able to do it then the p stands for the performance of the children so this this classroom management tool also helps the teacher to incorporate her interactive ways of teaching now when we all do interactive way and the monitoring and as you have said how to incorporate it as i've said positive way of doing we also have lot of ways of doing it up like with theater now theater is something with the children really relate to when we talk of literature and humanities so 100% theater works very well with the children and they always want to present out their things whether it's in the form of on a stage or in just in the small little classroom or maybe outside now uh, as i am already a protagonist of lot of nature involved into learning things so we always make our children to move beyond the classroom jyoti ma'am has also already spoken about it moving outside the classroom so we go out also under the tree and un- near the champa steps that we have in our school in the gulmohar greens so we have named also a school into something like that so the child also relates that i'm going to do an science experiment i'm going to study about nature i'm going to study about herb shrubs in the organic garden of the school so all these type of things really prompts and helps a teacher to incorporate it when we give them lots of live environment for these children something which is uh, dynamic for them and some something where it's very doable for these children and where they can be open out to speak to the teacher and do it up another thing in technology which i always find is at times i find over of technology becomes also an hindrance in learning with children when they go a lot because when the teacher tells with her expression because i completely believe that the teacher is a dramatist is a drama person in the classroom she can create that magic with her way of understanding things so we always encourage our teachers to present their presentation their youtube links what they want to interpret from the topic and the research that they have done on a topic instead of something which is pre coded or pre given to us through the technology media so all these things really make the teacher also have that creativity and the freedom to teach the child and the child is also able to relate it and 
able to communicate to his teacher that this is what how he also wants to learn and what is his progress his progression of understanding the topic so that's how i would like that the things should be incorporated with a very positive environment in a classroom great wonderful approach to what say thank you so much and i'm can i add one thing yeah, over here yeah, sure. why not why not just just to second uh, uh, your thought process whatever you have discussed and said i just want to add up that uh, it definitely helps in enhancing their critical thinking skills yeah. and their yes. reasoning skills you know so that ways they become more communicative they they learn collaborative learning sharing caring helping each other so it it really helps in enhancing their moral values as well yes absolutely absolutely Thank you so much. Thanks a lot to both the Jyoti ma'am. <laughs> Jyoti Square. <laughs> Jyoti Square. That, that's that's <laughs> collaboration right there. Ah, yeah, there's a collaboration. <laughs> In my life, I have Jyoti Cube. Okay. My mom is also Jyoti. Ah, <laughs> uh, you told me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, let's go forward with Nandita ma'am. Oh. So we are spreading the 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 Prakash Jyoti Prakash <laughs> <laughs> Prakash knowledge. <laughs> Nandita, ma'am, uh, creativity in learning is something that is making quite some noise these days. Uh, while we have heard of this being implemented for students, we have never really known well what's about in it for educators. Could you please throw some light on that? Yeah, thank you so much, and it was wonderful uh, listening to both the ma'ams. And there is so much of thought and so much of you know action in each of the th- uh, thoughts and the things that you shared. So fundamentally, I will just share uh, very broadly a model, a kind of a model that we are using in our school. So in our school, we have divided the uh, four programs or the four various ages of children. into the in four program so we have the age of ananda which is our youngest program which is our pre primary and nursery kg followed by the primary which is the age of jigyasa so the curiosity the you know uh, curiosity and then we have the age of uh, shraddha and then the age of sadhana so our 9 to 12 and our middle school program so between each of these four ages we follow a kind of a pedagogy that goes with the developmental ages of those students and you know the fundamental question for every educator as as a teacher is how do you create an active engagement between the child and the curriculum so everything that is set in the school all the you know the various academic uh, programs that we have is set keeping the curriculum at the center and the teacher is a facilitator between the child and the curriculum and that for us is what we call the interactive process of teaching and learning uh when we look at this so when we look at our youngest uh, group because they are so full of joy and so full of energy and you know they they are continuously active we have we use a lot of technology we use a lot of audio visual methods we use a lot of uh, storytelling we use a lot of sensorial work we have a very very active learning curriculum with a lot of teaching learning aids that we are using there and of course we have teaching learning material along with a lot of technology that we are using to create those kind of experiences for the students when we move on to primary along with the usual uh, smart boards and the you know the curriculum the interactive curriculum that is present we also b- create experiences so there is a incorporation of role plays theater and education a lot of expression because children uh, like to project themselves children want to uh, you know feel confident public speaking and therefore the curriculum at that time uses a lot of these kind of thing and also children are extremely creative at that time we also begin a art integrated curriculum during that time so in each of our uh, domain subjects we are definitely working with uh, art integrated uh, you know aspects of teaching that particular concept along with uh, what we call uh, 
uh, a lot of newspaper in education also we are using so we uh, get children to write creative thoughts and uh, we are you know very active in our children are communicating in hindu so we are writing a lot in that uh, the child education in hindu of course then we come to the middle school program where the children actually begin to disconnect with curriculum so we are using uh, research and referral at that time by posing a lot of projects so we pick on a lot of research and referral projects where we build an essential question like a problem solving question and children do a lot of research and referral work come back with projects we create a lot of portfolios during that time into each of our subjects and uh, that's how we attempt to engage our children there are students who come come back with maybe advertisements who do photography stories or uh, students who write essays of course then students who make short films students who make models so we try to encash on the various multiple intelligences using these kind of teaching learning aids and then of course the 9th and 12th program when we say sister sadhana you've had your curiosity we hope we have managed to instill good academic discipline and behaviors around that and uh, yes of course there is a lot of work and it's a lot of academically driven cognitive work as the demands of <coughs> the csc system goes so there is a lot of theater and education there is a lot of audio visual uh, things we are using there is a lot of hands on teaching learning material there is a lot of concrete to abstract uh, uh, kind of pedagogy plans that we are making and a lot of expression so this is the attempt uh, now a little more in the post covid age we are trying to you know wean children off a little bit of technology we are trying to reduce uh, the amount of utilization so this technology came with its own kind of uh, you know problems and too much of dependency on phones and tabs and internet so we're trying to bring kids back to paper pen uh, to books to reading so yes we are trying to nurture creativity trying to develop green sensitivity and trying to do a little more this time with a uh, little less technology and little more experience that is uh, you know more more to do with other uh, utilization of assets Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Great, great. That's awesome. And can Now I add you... on on this? Please, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm It's so okay. That's so nice. Interactive Because woman. I was so, I, I, uh, let me just uh, congratulate Nandita ma'am for whatever she's doing. It's wonderful to know. And the names, I really loved it. <laughs> yeah. And, Actually, uh, the names are very unique. very unique and and appropriate to their age uh, that's there so uh, so adding on to whatever you've said uh, yes uh, some more creativity that we do with the children to make them understand yes of course we have to refrain them a little from the technological uh, uh, entanglement and uh, so what we've uh, done is like subject wise again domain uh, has to be different so subject wise like for sciences or for social sciences there is a lot of uh, dance drama enactment so they are performing arts you know that is involved and that has to be also honed so and children have uh, i mean it's it's like uh, amazing to see you float the idea and the amount of uh, creativity that you see from uh, you know uh, from all ends you know from from all variety of children that is uh, really amazing and that induces uh, the teacher to also put in her you know heart and soul into her process of teaching learning and uh, that is you know so so sometimes we learn from our children that's how the teachers also learn from each other and they learn from the children so uh, this is one way that they do so like for, for sciences there is a, a science drama kind of a thing that we organize so it is a combination of scientific uh, concepts in the performing arts and then they they are given a platform and so they then they demonstrate they come up with ideas they plan out and then they uh, put it up and likewise it is done for mathematics also 
besides that we have the uh, in school exhibition in mathematics also they do it and it's amazing to see i mean the, there the primary teachers they put in a lot of uh, efforts in this so it's like you know simple concept like uh, face value and place value if you talk about or simple addition subtraction etc so there are a lot of things that they are using like we've uh, the the art and craft department they drew up a snakes and ladder a huge one in the uh, open area downstairs in the basement we have a special space for it and children love to do that i mean they they go and they do all sorts of calculations so is the steps that we have used so we've put up lot of things in the steps so when they climb up the staircases you know so that's when they 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 learn different new words maybe the opposites sometimes they are learning in english as well as in hindi and also in sanskrit also we are uh, trying to do that uh, to teach the children because that's our third language in 6 7 8 and then uh, uh, the mathematical concepts so the creativity if we talk about so when we open the door i mean that's that's where the d the protector if you uh, recall your d so protector is drawn uh, with the certain degrees marked on so whatever uh, place the door stops i mean that is where they have to identify depending on the classes i mean i'm talking about different age levels so 6 7 8 of course they study about the angles fifth class uh, they study about the angles and different types of so this is this is how the creativity is being used uh to teach certain concepts where it is again collaboration between the student and as well as the learners wow what a fun learning way <laughs> but i, I was about to say that snakes and ladder sounds so interesting if if we would have had it when our school have good have loved it <laughs> <laughs> and and you won't believe it not alone the smaller class children but class 11 12 children also they just oh, yeah. wait to go downstairs and when they find that okay this place is empty they will start playing on their own <laughs> <laughs> right so but but i always used to get scared from the snake even if that's board game <laughs> <laughs> the snake bites me <laughs> and the happiness of climbing up the stairs oh my god awesome <laughs> fun way of actually you know making them learn a lot of things english hindi sanskrit mathematics amazing great thank you so much thanks a lot it can be done with any language i mean depending on yeah. uh, that the staircases because in our school what we've done is we've uh, allocated the staircases to different levels of the children so so like it's like if there are three sets of staircases on one floor so which age group is going to use which which side of staircase and accordingly the concepts have been uh, put up okay mr paris let's go forward with you uh, mr paris interactive learning sure can keep students engaged while in school but what happens once they reach home is there any way for the same way fun learning environment to be encouraged in the home as well right so you see this this particular question uh, you know being in this uh, you know product and development side of things uh, you know we come up with a different thought process uh, and listening to all the teachers and people that are on ground and making such an effort to create that impact in children life it's it's good to understand that and uh, you know when we look at anything uh, especially when we are talking about education you know children are coming to school and uh, you know they're getting the best resources so a couple of things that we try and do is we try and make sure that the resource is available there uh, whatever the impact the teacher is using we kind of transcend that across those physicalities and have uh, you know an online uh, repository for all of them but at the same time one thing that we always agree upon is that in classroom teaching is always going to remain prime and it's not just because uh, you know children are coming to school but even as uh, you know as grown adult we we don't remember what we studied but we remember the teachers the reason because there is that that interaction there is that understanding between a teacher and a student that goes a long way so there is a lot of focus that gets given on that 
and uh, you know when we talk about technology uh, in general and how uh, you know to best utilize it how we encourage and we kind of work around it we try and generate teacher driven tools uh, so basically the idea becomes when a child is coming to school nobody knows the children better than the teachers that they are spending good 6 8 hours right uh, i mean it's either, either their parents or the teachers there is no other person that a child spends so much time with so teachers actually understand those students and the person that's teaching them the teacher they needs the they they, they need the tools to be able to create that engagement i think uh, uh, jyoti bhalla ma'am had mentioned about two way communication and you know there needs to be a teacher driven teacher driven kind of a, a, a role so the tools that we create they are all uh, you know on a gamified way so it's about what can we provide that will make the children more engaged in a classroom that will make them more uh, in, attentive and in, you know interacted in a classroom so even when we are talking about educational games we are talking about simulations and all of these things it's always teacher driven and we actually we are one of the organizations that not only gives them a bank of resources we actually encourage them to create more imagine a teacher being able to create their own educational games them being able to create their own uh, uh, you know uh, simulations their own uh, uh, interactivities as we call it and uh, what that does it one uh, gives that teacher a lot of ownership and a lot of uh, you know pride in exactly what tools are being used in the classroom and those same tools transcending and being available to the students at home as well so it creates a full ecosystem that we you know you know that we are trying to achieve is how can we create an ecosystem that sustains within school by providing the right tools uh, by providing those technology driven tools and at the same time giving them that access once they are home because you know at the end of the day as a teacher you know when we look at practically teaching there is so much syllabus and so much content that needs to be covered It becomes increasingly difficult to be able to use that and uh, you know all these activities that we are mentioning and you know that are wonderful uh students don't get a lot of time to be able to do that in school so so the idea becomes okay uh, you know how how can we do that the best and that's the thought process that we kind of put behind it uh in in our journey so far uh, you know we've had uh, we started in 2019 with this project of us and we had to tackle two years of this lockdown and that was uh, you know to be we worked very closely with all the teachers you know that's that's one of the things we are not one you know that Uh, work on the product itself and to be able to see teachers being so innovative and have that ability to you know not just learn new things but also execute it wonderfully in front of everyone because when the students were at home they were not only teaching the students the parents were equally involved they were seeing what all is done right not a lot of people realize that so to be able to do that was such a good experience for us at a very early stage of uh, you know us as an organization so even after that that has been a big focus is how do we help the teachers with workload management by providing them with tools that actually help them in classrooms so you know that's that's the kind of approach we have um, you know having the right tools in classroom is equally important as having the right tools at home uh with this you know actually i remember just because it did you mentioned that when you launched your product covid came in between right so i remember my teachers who had i think 20 25 years of experience calling me ki pavni zoom kaise chalate hain we have to take classes on zoom how to upgrade that can you please tell me i was not a wonderful student in my school 70 75 average student because i was more into like i was the head girl of my school because of the leadership quality and i was more into sports so i had wonderful relationship with my teacher because i also wanted attendance from them <laughs> so they they called me directly ki pavni please mujhe sikha do and some of them are near my house also so i went to their home and i actually told them how to operate and in covid times i also used to take online classes So I was working with one of the online portal, and yeah, I know how difficult it is to make LMS because we used to handle everything from LMS. I had mm-hmm. students from all over the world, from US, Paris, and till now I am teaching uh, students who are in Paris. 
so one is 54 years old the other one is 27 years old but i take their classes at night so here if it's 12 at midnight there is 7 7:30 in the evening so making a product like this for us wow and you know, we we try and uh, we try and keep adapting and, and improving and that's one of the biggest reasons why i love interacting with you know the teachers and principals because only you know they are the ones that are making the actual difference all we can do is we can you know try and provide them with something but at the end of the day it's it's you know everyone here that is actually making that impact like i said i uh, you know i'm a graduate from university of british columbia i spent 9 years of my life overseas and uh, this is a not just something that i'm doing but it's very passionately driven i came back specially for this back in late 2018 and i started working on this project and you know i went back to my teachers i tried to understand them and it was such a good experience to be able to actually understand what goes behind the scenes because you know students don't know that right there is a lot of work that goes behind the scenes for teachers to be able to set things up to be able to create that impact it doesn't happen in that half hour it happens a lot before that and you know it's it's all about actually being able to understand things and and providing something that is meaningful right i can relate <laughs> because i reach my home by 9 9:15 and then i have to be like oh family lesson planning what is what are you going to teach them so everything and we also you know we cannot do that rote learning wala thing we have to implement exactly. different different things and i am teaching the double the age of my I am 24 and he is 58. So it's a wonderful experience. But then, yes, I have to do a lot more. And now I can understand that how stressful it was for teachers, though they used to make it interesting for all of us, just because of their, you know, creativity and innovation. And like all of you mentioned, wonderful ways of how you implement new learnings in your school. Absolutely. <laughs> in fact uh, during the covid when it had just begun you know so it suddenly came up nobody was prepared for it yeah. and so the teachers you know the best part was that the teachers didn't have material and how beautifully using their household things they created their teaching aids that was commendable and that shows how creative the teachers are <laughs> in fact all people are <laughs> that's so true ma'am we actually set up a, a special helpline during those times uh, because the teachers are trying to figure out things i mean at the end everyone needs to learn when the time comes but uh, yeah to to be able to have such a collective effort from everyone was good to see it was a learning experience in itself and what i talked about the collaborative learning it was a learning right. where in a lot of children they taught their teachers how to use it how to uh, use zoom and how to take a class and and they would assist you know that ma'am you do this it will be working like this and uh, obviously there were a lot of uh, uh, not so pleasant experiences also wherein um, some of the children they took the lead of you know helping out the teachers pitching out and uh, checking out ma'am is ye galat link hai please isko isko uh, out kar do isko exit mat karo <laughs> <laughs> so that yeah, way is it yeah. you no know? there was uh, misuse it there was a nuisance value also absolutely. attached with it yeah, but they were the ones uh, yeah they were sharing it with their friends and they were uh, att- attending the classes but then they only who used to tell us that ma'am they were the outsiders they have come into our class uh, and also we have seen it during the pandemic yeah i, I, I think i don't think any of the teachers had imagined you know it was something that was like that But yeah, I mean, it's yeah, an experience yeah. in itself. Everybody managed it very well. Whether a teacher or a parent, there were some parents who did not have instruments at home. Their material was not available. They had two children, so there was only mobiles left at home. Still, they wanted. I remember there was a parent, and he requested that I can't put my video on because in the same room, my two children are, st- are, t- are studying, and my I myself also working. so then uh, the children were just listening and still trying to you know uh, be part of the school systems so we they, everybody learned a lot during that pandemic that how in less of material also we all had to make our life go on 
so everybody learned that the that it's not half glass empty it's half glass filled <laughs> yes absolutely yeah. <laughs> this is what we should keep in our mind every time keeping the negativity aside and you know being an optimistic throughout yeah 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 i know like negativity is do come in between but still we have to teach our mind no yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think we should thank uh, i mean in a way this is uh, what we are doing right now can <clears throat> you think of doing it uh, i mean in 2019 we couldn't think of doing such no, a thing we could not we, we never thought not. of but today we are we are connected from different parts and we are all together and we are interacting we don't know each other but yet we are yes, interacting we are. and yes. we become very i mean within a very short span <laughs> of how many uh, 40 45 minutes we've come yeah. so closer to each other <laughs> absolutely yes true very true beauty of zoom <laughs> <laughs> actually Beauty of two sides to to all coin. This is the good side. Oh, yes, <laughs> most positive and very productive side of the Zoom. Right. Productive. Uh, let's go forward with the last question, and I would like everybody to give your views on the same. Okay, because it it is something related to whatever you already have spoken. So it is interactive learning makes use of visual activities like game, simulation, and technology. to provide an enriching educational experience for the students would you say such creative learning works better in just online or just offline lessons or it can be beneficial for everyone jyoti ma'am from green mode it's a hybrid it's a it's a, we talk about hybrid mode right, <laughs> right. so online offline it works well with both and i think we have to use both that is that is the beauty of uh, uh, this process you know teaching has to happen learning has to happen mode is just a medium you know so that medium should not restrict <laughs> the process of teaching and learning and whatever you can do and there are uh, pros and cons of everything some uh, certain um, uh, like games can work out well on in online mode some processes can work out well in offline mode like i was talking about dramatization role play etc etc but that was not limited to because during the online classes also we were doing these kind of activities the children were doing role plays we used to have competitions also we used to have assemblies also and all this went online so it's it's like both according to me it's both okay i would take this on to it i am strongly uh, i believe in offline classes only i really believe that a physical class environment is something which every child should be getting it up and he should never be denied from that physical class environment yes because of the different types of exigencies we at times we have to provide them now even just tomorrow only there is a rahul gandhi pad pad yatra <laughs> and suddenly the schools have been told that uh, there would be disruption on the traffic but still i would feel yes that time hybrid does work that time online does work if at all we have some important thing completely uh, agree and only accept that creative curriculum can only flow in an offline scenario in a physical classroom environment unless unless the child and the teacher have that one to one connection when you feel the gestures and the tone of your teacher and of the child teacher is not able to te- reach the child and in the online scenario at times you are not able to come to what exactly is going on how much the child is really receiving the receiving part is really a miss in the online scenario it's only in the offline when the teacher and the child sits in front of each other now when we are in a online scenario we are not able to find out at home who is writing for whom from where is writing <laughs> and what is he writing no no actually much of issue i have yeah. on assessments assessments was a big big challenge for all of us during the time of the online scenario people say that okay i can do this i can do that we can record we can do this we take these many pledges we take these many things but still it never worked the assessments were never fair and conducive so i am a very big uh, protagonist for offline and creative curriculum 
Uh, no, actually, I just want to make the point clear. I did yeah, not sure, say sure. that I am only for the, I mean, this is only the interactive learning process that can be used. I am of the same opinion that offline classes are the most suitable one for the children, for educating them. That I firmly believe. But what I'm talking about are the different types of techniques that can be used which can go online as well as offline. So my opinion was for the techniques. Yeah, not Jyoti, for the we could not, uh, you're right on that part. We could right. not reach across the world. Now sitting here in Faridabad, I can reach out to Trinity School of College in London also. Child can be listening and gathering good information from there also. Instead of just reading it out from a book. So that way technology really helps. But uh, I feel, that's my feeling, that intra, that creative curriculum flows very well in a physical class environment. Definitely. And Nita ma'am, how about you and your thoughts? Yeah, I think um, I too am a very strong uh, believer in a physical setting. And uh, But I do agree with uh, ma'am that says that, you know, now that we have tasted uh, tasted a kind of a online this thing. It is up to us to create it a very beautiful blended kind of a intervention. So while schools uh, or any institutions, you know, we are social institutions. So we can never get away from the impact of social learning, which requires a physical presence because people learn best in a social setting. So nothing can replicate that. Nothing can replicate the human connect because whatever you do when you are with a machine uh, in an online setting, uh, it's very cold. The interaction is cold and clinical. Even when we are sitting together while we are connecting, it's not the same thing like a physical presence right. or the physical yeah, yeah absolutely presence, yeah. experiencing the aura and those kind of things. Uh, you can't replicate it, but. Yes, in certain things where you want a certain visualization or you want to create an experience where you cannot replicate it in a physical sense. Yes, we should be able to draw that into our curriculum, keeping in mind all the constraints like time limitations, you know, the, the technology reach of it. Certain solitary experiences can be reinforced like adaptive learning. Adaptive learning is a very, very big, uh, you know, tool that really, really works when you are working in differential classrooms. So when you want to do differential teaching, adaptive uh, learning tools are a great help in specifically things like science and math, where the lot of, you know, uh, the learning progression is uh, linear. Therefore, you know, past prerequisite, it's very easy. So, yes, it works very well. You know, there the technology really works well because you need an individual intervention in, in, a, in a classroom where you're physically, it fails, you know. So, yes, it has to be, you know, but it has to be very judicious. It has to be really thought through and it has to be really powerfully used by the educator. And has, one has to be very sincere about it. The problem with technology, what happens is that it's also an easier alternative. So sometimes, you know, uh, you don't know where to draw the line where people want to, you know, just take the easier alternative and say, okay, fine, this is a technology, this thing, and you run this uh, animation or you run the uh, yeah. audio visual, this thing, and therefore I have to do a lesser bit of, you know, uh, planning on my own part because I expect the media to engage the child. So, yeah, if we can all sincerely make sure that, you know, that transgression doesn't happen, then yes, it's a hybrid world. It's never going to go away. We are working with generations of students who are going to be more comfortable with technology than anything else. And we have to prepare them for the future, not for anything else. So technology is a bit, big part of life and uh, it has to be there. But... At school, we can't forget the socializing and the human aspect of it. So, yeah. I think everything is right. It has to be hybrid. It has to be. And I know one more thing, like whatever we get, we shouldn't leave that. So, this is one platform which has provided us ample opportunities in terms of like there's a time constraint. And there are different variety of learners. Now, the teachers at home, you know, in the comfort of the child, uh, 
can conduct that one to one or a small group interaction with the children where same level children can uh, a class can be conducted to make sure especially when the examinations are around the corner you know so specific preparations or specific topics or doubt clearing sessions can very beautifully be done so that is not time bound correct and and uh, you know you can do it at at uh, at your ease level it is not uh, forced upon and it's a, it's again i lose the same word it is a collaborative working where the teachers and the students can decide on a collective time where both of them are comfortable and then do it because saturdays you can't call the children no matter how much nicely you try and teach but the children have to go for especially the senior classes they have to go for uh, coachings that's so it. you can't have uh, physical classes on saturdays so that's there Uh, Mr. Paris, how about your thoughts on the same? Right. So, uh, how we look at it is, uh, or how I, look, how I uh, kind of look at it is, learning gets done in classroom, uh, and there's no absolute no doubt about it. But recapitulation can be done also. So, I believe hybrid in that sense can work very well. That uh, you know, while a child is learning new information. while we are imparting them and and you know giving them all that knowledge that is best done in a physical environment in a classroom but when it comes to recapitulation purpose and uh, and uh, kind of revising things and assessments these are certain things that can be done online but besides that uh, you know the another thing that uh, you know we focus really heavily on is having the right assessment models Uh, I know Nandita ma'am and uh, Jyoti ma'am both had mentioned about assessment, right? I mean, uh, we have seen a lot of digital assessments over the last few years, and they have been very dry. When I say dry, it's either you know true false MCQ, you know, they're not sufficient. Just these in itself are not the right way of assessing students. So for us, a lot of focus and a lot of thought has gone into okay, how do we assess the students better when it comes to uh digital assessments so for that we have uh, kind of worked on on tools such as speech recognition modules uh, that encourage the students to speak our system automatically recognizes what they uh, what they're speaking uh, a lot of objective questions have been drawn out and not just the two basic ones things like your uh, you know image driven questions your diagram based questions we have over 15 different kinds of automated objective questions and even with the subjective types uh, we have uh, developed an ai algorithms that help uh, with automotive assessment so the idea becomes that you know whatever the child is learning in school how can we uh, you know help them recapitulate it the best and that's that's the that the area we kind of focus on and also at the same time uh, you know providing the tools in classroom so one of the things that uh, i think uh, uh, jyoti ma'am uh, had uh, i know there are two jyoti ma'ams yet uh, <laughs> but uh, from greenwood school um, you had mentioned about smart boards and uh, having those hardware in classroom that the teachers are using so how how we look at it it's very important that things that are available there or that are showcased there kind of match what the students are, are watching at home because nowadays there's so much exposure to students i mean i mean we i always say they are over exposed sometimes to to all these things so uh, you know we kind of have try and have that ecosystem that synchronization that that uh, we like talk about working a really uh, hard on creating the right assessing tools and at the same time having a um, what we call you know more tools driven approach not just videos not just worksheet assignment also engaging the students in multiple interactivities and games to be able to understand concepts better to be able to assess them in a better manner and also uh, i think uh, nandita ma'am was the one that mentioned about progressive or uh, you know that uh, progressive assessment or uh, you know learning and that's one of the things again uh, is even when we are talking about automation not all students are seeing right uh, so it's you know we try and create those uh, adaptive kind of assessment modules 
that uh, helps the student understand okay where do i stand and at the same time gives teacher a lot of feedback as well for a teacher to to understand where does a classroom stand uh, because for them they are teaching multiple sections multiple classes to keep up with every individual students is is not possible so it's having the right data having an adaptive learning module that uh, automatically does something so that's where i think technology helps uh, but uh, to be fair learning is is always done better in a classroom in a physical environment because it's not only subjective but there's also a lot of emotional growth that a child goes through there are social skills that a child develops so that's where i think uh, you know learning in itself can never be uh, done any way better than this but yes used in the right manner whether it be assessment or recapitulation or also uh, for remedial classes that's where i think you know sessions like these are are wonders correct yeah thank you so much for your wonderful words just because of of my age of experience you all have <laughs> that's so wonderful to have all of you here and this recording is going to be uploaded on youtube and the parents and the children are also going to watch it because we are going to optimize it in such a manner so i would like all of you to give a final message to the parents and the children who are going to watch it so nandita ma'am you may start right well i just um uh i just one first of all thank you it was really wonderful to hear everyone here and uh, it's really great it uh, takes you back to your own drawing board and think that what can you do better each time so thank you so much for that and uh, you know i don't have any special message but you know i just you know when you mentioned it i recall something my mentor told me and he spent a lifetime with the krishna murthy schools and he said you know another thing is remember one thing as an educator you are like the washing machine you know you you cannot ever think that uh, you know you rinsed once and you've cleaned the world he says every day you do your work and you think you've done a great job with your students you send them back and tomorrow you will you will restart the process with the same thing so having the ability to you know continuously keep the faith keep the belief keep the processes going and knowing that every day in the morning you have to still do again what you did uh, did yesterday and when you do it continuously then over a period of time maybe your child after 20 years of leaving you will come back and say yes i did i do think i learned something from you so yeah as an educator it's something like you have to continuously reinvent yourself to suit what your learner needs at that time and to be able to you know motivate yourself to have the faith to say yes everybody can learn and you can learn with everybody thank you so much thanks a lot jyoti ma'am from manaskriti school okay <laughs> uh, so on this note uh, wonderful and very enriching session that we all had it together so for everyone all the audience the parents and the children who would be listening out to us with the new year coming so let's all make a great resolution and it's my real good promise to each one and all the students and the parents who are listening to us that we should all really believe in getting into the world of books because reading is something which is very important for each one of us whether we are a child whether we are an adult because reading opens your vistas of knowledge reading opens to your minds of creativity so keep reading good books join book reading clubs form your own family reading clubs and talk about books and newspapers which have gone away from all of our lives since the time the digital media has come into it none of us at at times in the morning ever flip those pages of the beautiful newspapers and find out what's the news all about we always take out our mobiles to find out the news which i at times i feel you don't have that much of pulse though you see everything but when you read the newspaper how much knowledge how much language enrichment it helps us So reading is what I would really like to tell every parent and child that read good books and join and make new reading clubs. Thank you. Thank you. I will also do. Sure. <laughs> yes, Jyoti ma'am from Green Book School. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, 
my message to all the children who are going to be watching this video as well as to the teachers uh, which i usually share with my own children and teachers is that you know the schooling is the longest period that a child spends in school you know it's a good uh, number of years which are there which are invested in the uh, in the school so it has to be very very fruitful journey for both the teachers as well as the students because if the children are going to stay focused and if the teachers are able to uh, do something great you know with every child's life i think that's that's something which is going to give them a very very sound accomplishment uh, happiness accomplished happiness within them and also make them feel proud when they come up and share their uh, their uh, their new ventures or what they have reached after leaving the school and when they come back and then they share their success stories that's something which everyone cherishes <laughs> and uh, that's the beautiful thing so so i i usually tell all the children who try to be a little naughty also naughtiness is not uh, something which is wrong but yes of course they need to understand that this time period will not come back again so it's an opportunity for everyone to invest their 100% time effort and concentration and if they do that i think life is going to be a blessing for them yes and it's one it's a wonderful feeling when you become something and then you go back to school because uh, last sunday only i went to school because there was some alumni meet and yeah. it was so such a proud moment to see everybody yeah. when you have reached up to some level not that much high but still so it's a beautiful feeling and i i can actually relate the words relate with and, the words you have spoken and and uh, to add up when the teachers would remember remember you used to do this and i used to catch hold of this and all that so you remember and you relive your moments again you know that's the beauty of the relationship between a student as well as a teacher and that's the purest relationship yes both a teacher love and a motherly love <laughs> yes mr paris final message from your side yeah i don't think i can uh, cap what what all has been said right now but uh, one thing i will say i mean being a student in school i don't think there's a better time than this in anyone's life it's one of the the best times anyone has so all i can say is for the students you know for the upcoming year you know, best of luck for everything i know it's uh, you know it's going to be another year full of uh, a lot of learnings and memories to be made and like ma'am rightly said you know it doesn't matter exactly uh you know what's being taught because that's not the only thing you're going in the school for i mean that's how we looked at it it's about creating those memories not just with your peers but also with teachers i don't remember what i learned chapter wise in school but i remember the teachers the impact they created that has lasted me throughout my you know journey up till now and that's going to last me throughout i mean that's one of the things because we don't teachers don't expect anything back from us right they are only there to make an impact to do their absolute best and they want nothing but the best for their children no matter if they are the sweetest or they are not so i think that's the wonderful thing about uh, you know about teachers in general and it's it's a noble profession and i you know wish all the teachers and the students best of luck for the upcoming time and also the parents let's not forget them <laughs> Yeah, and using this platform let's wish all the children the very best who are going to be appearing for the board exams oh yes oh yes yes <laughs> and uh, uh, always remember that i tell all the children yes i can just remember these three magical words and everything is going to fall in place put in your heart and soul in whatever you're doing do your best and you have a lot of uh, Uh, potential in you which you have to recognize and you will definitely succeed in life so thank you so much with this we come to the end of this beautiful session and yes you all are two multi talented people i think nandita ma'am is still in school it's 6:15 
and she is still there and all of you really hats off to whatever you are doing and the words that you spoke i i i agree that these are recorded and everybody is going to watch it but yes i am going to take all of this in both my mind and my heart and follow this till you know i go on so thank, thank you so much, much everybody thank you thanks a lot our pleasure